This tutorial is going to explain some text features as well as why it's important to select certain options on your text outlines. So on this first area here where I have behind fill and no behind fill, I'm going to go ahead and select this first text here. I've already, on these texts on this page, I've already made them Pantone black. I'm just going to double click the outline color down here. I'm going to select a certain width. We're going to go ahead and select a Pantone color. And I'm doing corners rounded, line caps rounded, and I'm going to make sure behind fill and scale with image are checked. This is how you should set up your outlines. I'm going to hit OK. It looks pretty good. Nothing really wrong with that. Now, if I right click and drag this over here, let go and hit copy outline here. I've just copied that same outline here. Quick way to, to copy outlines to different objects. But what I'm going to go and do is in the outline color here, I'm going to uncheck behind fill and hit OK. Now you can see the text looks horrible because the outline isn't placed behind the text fill. So that's why you want to use a behind fill on your outline. Next thing I want to talk about is scale with image. So again I'm just going to right click and drag this outline over here. Say copy outline here. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to change it to um, sharp corners and, and line caps. Hit OK. Again this is with scale with image on and behind with fill on. And then we're going to right click and drag this here to copy the outline here. But on this second one, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to uncheck scale with image and hit OK. Now at first glance, those look the same still, nothing really wrong. But if you were to be designing and you needed to make this bigger, watch as I increase the size of this, you'll notice that the the width of the outline matches the scale that it was when it was smaller on the first one. The width of the outline has changed to a thinner outline on the bottom one because we did not have scale with image selected. So that's why it's important to have scale with image selected as well. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these texts out. And then I'm just going to double click on here to change what this says. I'm just going to type something else. Let's get rid of that red outline. Let's make it Pantone black. make sure behind fill scale with image and then I'm going to make my word let's say blue. Now a cool text feature that you can do is kind of a shine effect on your text. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your text is exactly how you like it on your screen. I have it exactly how I like it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my freehand tool. I'm just going to kind of click and drag kind of a sort of straight line but a little bit wavy across and then all the way around and connect back to the front. So if I wanted to, I could fill this with a color and it would fill in. So now I'm going to go to my shape tool and I'm just going to edit these nodes just to kind of get them sort of around the same height but I want it to be a little bit wavy. You can choose to do completely straight and just use a rectangle if you do if you want to it's really up to you. So now what I'm going to do is going to take the text I'm going to hit control C to copy and then control V 
to paste. I'm going to go ahead and take the outline off of this second version because I just pasted a second version right on top of the other one. And I'm going to go ahead and click off to the side. I'm going to click on my object here and then I'm going to hold down shift and then click on my word, my top layer. I'm going to hit trim and then I can click on this, press delete and then if I click on the top of the word here I have a separate piece so that you can have kind of a two-tone color on your text. Now the thing with this though is as soon as you trim that object it's no longer a customizable text so you can't change it now. That's why you want to have the text how you want it to be right at the beginning. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back, have it Pantone Process Cyan and I'm going to go to my fill tool and go to the second one, the fountain fill dialog. Here I'm going to go to custom. I'm going to make a custom gradient for this. So I have the Pantone cyan on one side. I'm going to click here on the white side, go to others, and make sure it's on Pantone cyan or the same color that you have selected except on 0% tint. Hit OK. Then you're going to go into the Postscript Options button here, choose Dot, choose the LPI and the angle that you prefer to use, hit OK, and then hit OK. Now I'm going to use my Interactive Fill tool here to go ahead and adjust this gradient, move these boxes around till I get it how I like it. And we're starting to get kind of a shine effect to this. So then on the bottom layer, I'm going to select the bottom text. I'm going to go and do the same thing again. I'm going to go to the Fountain Fill dialog, go to Custom, but this time on the white side, I'm going to go to Others. I'm going to select that Pantone Black that we used on the outline. Go to Postscript Options again. I'm going to want to make sure I have the same settings. Hit OK, hit OK, and then again, I think it's easiest just to use the interactive fill tool to move this around, get it how you like it. If you hold down control, you can make a straight up and down angle. And in a matter of minutes, you have kind of a nice shine effect to your text. And even if you wanted to, you can go in here. Let's say we increase this, this uh, black outline a little bit. I'm going to copy this, paste it. Don't worry about it being on top at the moment. I'm going to select white, select maybe three, hit OK. And I'm going to hit shift page down to move that all the way to the back, then control page up to move it up one. And again, that's under arrange order as well. And that makes it pop out a little bit more with that white outline on there.